she likes messing with you, Barry. That's her she does. thing. It's fun. <laughs> Hi, this is WGSN DV Going Solo Network Radio, the number one internet singles talk network with Let's Talk Dating with Christine and Barry. Hi, Barry. Hi, Christine. Good to see you. Nice, nice hat once again. Thank you. I said a chapeau day. Uh, yes. Well, when I go out, sometimes I do that. I mean, I wear a baseball cap every day I go out because, you know, less protection from the sun. Yes. <clears throat> but, my, but my chapeaus and my fedoras have been sitting idle for over a year now. I know. Well, now we're going to start getting out more, I think, and we'll be able to don our chapeaus. <laughs> Indeed. So today we're going to talk about is it an issue? Is it not an issue? How important is it? The difference in ages of you and somebody that you're dating. How many years is okay and how many years is not okay? And what kind of criteria do you have? And have you really ever thought about it? And have you thought about why you think it, you know? <laughs> and all those <laughs> possible things, yes. <laughs> There's so many possibilities. And it was fun because when we had talked about, oh, that's true. Yes. It, it can it can make no difference at all how what difference there are in your ages, older, younger, if you really do love each other and you have a lot in common. And that's a lot of ifs. So we're going to talk about a lot of the ifs. Right. And that's the thing is that is that love is one thing because <clears throat> it's like, you know, there are the things where there are the older people dating very young people. And I'm keeping it generic because it works both ways where love is the apparent reason but the truth is there's so things that apart from that doesn't work so it's like what works or doesn't work as well when you talk about that as well yes yes and it's interesting how the number of decades also needs to be combined with the person's maturity and life experiences because mm -hmm. when i was newly single <clears throat> in my 30s i dated a guy that was exactly 10 years younger and we certainly had a lot of fun together. He was an interesting guy. And I found that I had to explain a lot of the things I would talk about. Like one of the things <laughs> I remember really poignantly is I was telling, talking about something. And I said, oh, follow the bouncing ball. And he went, huh? He didn't know what that <laughs> reference meant. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So I had to stop and explain. And then there were times we would do things as a group and there'd be my friends there. And he couldn't participate in the conversation sometimes because it was just life experience. It wasn't that he wasn't smart. He just did not experience some of the things that we were discussing. Right. And I do find 10 years doesn't seem to feel as much now because the decades don't seem as far apart. But there still can be opportunities for challenges with communication and challenges with conversations because your life experiences are so different. Absolutely. And that's yeah. the thing is, I mean, it's funny. I've seen a lot of posts recently. There was a, actually a post about this yesterday. I saw that and I was watching people's responses and the, and the reactivity was like, whoa, people are not even considering talking about this. They're just going, oh no, don't do that sort of thing. And I'm like, what is going on? I know the preconceived notions of either direction has been fascinating. Because mm -hmm. I put it out to my, I do that meetup group on Monday nights for oh, local yes. Yeah. And so I said, well, I'll just ask them. And there were 25 people and every person had a different opinion. It was mm -hmm. fun. That's the thing. So, it's, it's, it's the assumption thing that happens. And, and truth is, like, yeah, I know there's people, obviously, when, when some 20-year-old blonde girl is dating some 95-year-old old man, that's like, okay, that's more extreme. And, you know, that's love. Well, maybe we'll see. But a lot of times it's, you know, is it, is it gold digging? Is the home just looking to feel a bit more, you know, feel alive again because they don't? Mm -hmm. It's like all different reasons for it. And the other thing also, and I want to put on the table because it's one of the things I experienced is that I found myself in my own journey when I, up to about early 40s, I was always older than my age was. When it got to my mid 40s, it went the other way around where I actually feel younger than my age is. It's really weird. You know, it's like you don't have your numbers. And yeah. so, you know, relationship choices are like, well, do you, if you base it on numbers only, you know, because some people who are 50, for example, may look like they're 70, and some people who are 50 may look like they're 30 and may act that way. Mm -hmm. So it's like those numbers, mm -hmm. if you're using just your age as a chronological, you know, as a counter, and you're limited on dating within like one or two years either side, if that's what your rules are, 
that does that work as well? That doesn't work either. So that's why this topic is important because it's not so much about the years as about compatibility. Yes. Well, and I had another experience when I was in my forties. <laughs> one every one, one every decade. <laughs> yeah, every, yeah, at least one interesting experience before I met my late husband in my fifties, where this man who wasn't that much older than me, I think he was, I don't know, seven or eight years older. And we were chatting, just chatting. The first time we'd met, I, we were probably at some club and he was talking about his past dating experiences and the people, the women that he had dated. And they were like in their early thirties. And finally I said, hon, I'm too old for you. This, I am so not the demographic <laughs> that you're normally dating. Cause I look younger than I've always looked younger than my age. And so he goes, well, really, how old are you? And I, whatever old I was, and he goes, oh, well, you didn't look at it. I said, but it's really important that you talk about the mentality, not just the looks of the people you were dating. Right. So I said, I'm too old, I'm too old. You just need to know that I'm too old. <laughs> <laughs> and my friends laughed that I put it that way, but it's really, it felt very true. Yeah, I mean, I, I, one relationship I was in, um, part of his life experience, she was actually... I think now she's probably about maybe three or four years younger than me chronologically, but she ended up acting about 10 years older than me mm -hmm. because of the life experience she went through. And so her compatibility mm -hmm. was really like Miss White. We had a lot, when we had fun together initially, but then after a while, we sort of got started to get clear about what was really going on. I was like, this isn't working out because I feel like I'm not meeting somebody at my, my compatibility, which is really mm -hmm. interesting. So that's why I say the chronological numbers don't always match who you really are. No, or who they really are. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that I have had men be, and all their anonymous will be protected because I love that men are so transparent with me and they tell me the honest truth, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm so grateful about that. And they've explained to me that sometimes when they've dated women that were close to their age, this is men over 50 and in their 60s and even in their 70s, that when they dated women their age, they're not always the nicest women. They're kind of bitchy and they think men are stupid and they don't want men to do anything for them or help them because I know how to open my own door and I'm independent and I don't need your advice. And the guy's like, well, where's my place in this relationship? So they, even though they really preferred dating somebody in within their same decade, they've now gone to a couple, one or two decades less mm -hmm. younger <clears throat> because those women think they're smart and want to hear what they have to say and are willing them for them to be emotionally and mentally and financially supportive. So yes, you do see that sometimes the attraction for younger women can be their pocketbook for sure, their wallet, but it's also because the men feel appreciated. They feel honored they feel accepted which is so important and mm -hmm. often women in my generation are not feeling that way and certainly not speaking that way to men so the men are going younger that's i mean it's not just the that can be just the eye candy and yes it does make you feel younger and more desirable that you've got this young you know 30 young married younger chicky on your arm the ones who are really good guys who would like somebody their age i have heard this over and over and over about why they don't. Right, and, and I mean, I'm just looking back at my own experience, and there's such a, um, how do say this? I'm very aware of the fact that it does have that sense of incompatibility happening, because first of all, it's like, do you really want a relationship? Which some people like, they're, they're so against all these things, like why are you bothering looking to be in a relationship? Yeah. But also, but also you know, just from my personal experience, I. The women I meet who are my age or thereabouts, give or take a year or two, oftentimes feel like they're my mother's age. It's really strange. And I mean, one, because I mean, I've, I've always had a fairly healthy, you know, active life. I mean, I, you know, I ride a bike every day, I go for hikes. So my, my activity level is not sedentary. And I have met people, actually, I've met people who are even younger than that who are sedentary now. They've given up, like they've settled in. And, you know, the, the way they take care of themselves, their physical, you know, their physical health, their, their musculature, their their body type. It's just, I'm going. This isn't somebody I want to play with, because we don't have anything to don't have anything in common. Like, and you know, we, you're playing with horses. 
that person doesn't have that sort of a um, fitness level to participate with that isn't going to be fun. Mm -mm. So that's you know, <clears throat> so that's a piece too. That's such a good point. Such a good point that when you think about back to the list of what you need and want from a relationship, right? If you're somebody that <clears throat> you like being home, you like watching Netflix, you like cooking fun meals, then you want to find somebody like that. <clears throat> not somebody that wants to go and be doing a lot of things at the same time. So it's interesting because I had a client, she was 71 when we first started working together. Mm -hmm. And she kept looking at all these seven men in their 70s. And oh, she went, she ran on her treadmill every day. She went to the gym four days a week. She was very active, very fit. And a lot of the men in their 70s, were just not, you know, even if they had been before, they weren't now. So she was, I, we said, okay, fine, we'll look 60s. We can keep looking 60s. And then this man that was 74 wrote to her and she's rolling her eyes again. And I said, no, 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 read his profile. This man's on a softball league. He plays softball three days a week. <laughs> They've now been together for three and a half years. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. So, that, so this is the thing as well, is that numbers can work for you or against you. And that's the thing is the, 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 the that's one reason we're talking about this is because, you know, when people say, well, a certain person of this age is not going to work. It's like, how do you know? Because, you know, and, and it's funny because somebody who was going to go out with, we didn't, but we're talking about it. It turns out that I'm actually one year younger than her mother, which is oh. like, that's weird. But at the that same time, energetically, we was we were very much on the same page on so many things. And her mother was so much, you know, I saw pictures like I'm going, yeah, we're not the same age, even though she's one year older than me. She looks like she's... You know, so this thing about numbers is really an interesting conversation and finding that that years is OK. I can think comes back to, you know, what is what's compatibility? What is your list requirements? What do you bring to the party? Those are important things to consider. And we've talked about this so many other aspects. So it's almost like we're taking the same conversation, but looking through the lens of age as the as the conversation. Yes. <clears throat> because <clears throat> the world is ageist. Yes, we, it is. Do people want to complain about it. Excuse me. <clears throat> it's a fact. It's a fact. So if you say, oh, it's a fact, stop complaining about it. How do I work within these parameters that it's a fact? Yeah. So one of the things that came up on Monday, which is such a thing for me, is can we lie on our profile? Because I look so much younger. I act so much younger. I have do all these things that are younger. So my across the board advice is no. Right. <laughs> of course. I'll, I'll work with people who lie on their profile. It's not that I have this huge moral thing about it. I just think what I hear is, oh, I'm going to tell them right away. Well, how does that work? Because then they go, well, they lied. So what other things would you be willing to lie about? Mm -hmm. So what I say is on your profile, you write about all the young things you do. You know, who cares about your age if you run 10 miles every weekend? Really? Right. I don't care how old you are. If you can do that, I we could certainly keep up with each. It's not like I do that, but I do a lot of active things. So then they go, well, they won't search for me because of the criteria. I go, that's why you write. You know, mm -hmm. I guys are much better about writing and not getting discouraged as quickly as women do. So I tell women, and since your clientele is women, I know you do this too. Just write, 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 write with no expectations that you're just practicing. And when you write to somebody that, they say they want somebody that you're now outside of their criteria. The odds are against that they're going to write back. And if they read what you write and you write, gosh, you do this and I do that. I know I'm outside of your age requirements, but geez, I think we have these things in common. We both kayak or we both hike or we both play yeah. tennis. You know, I'm on a team or whatever it is that you see that they do as an active thing and you do it as well to prove you're young enough for them, even though your age is outside their range. And men are well, way more, I have to tell you, women, they won't even look. Doesn't he pay attention? Didn't he read my profile? I don't date anybody that, did you read what he wrote? Did you read what he wrote? Did you read his profile? Men are much more forgiving about that. <laughs> well, the other thing also is, at the end of this, I, I mean, because I'm single, so I do look on the dating apps as well is that some of the pictures people post don't actually show them off the way that they want to be seen either. No. 
You know, it's like if you're somebody who I'm, I'm going to say to the women bluntly, you know, no, no, make us some flack for this. But I'm sorry, ladies, if if you are uh, portraying yourself as somebody who's fit and athletic, you like to do things that are fun and you want to go play and you dance and do other things, then have a picture that shows that. If yes. You a picture to show you in formal wear or long, long shapeless outfits, which I've seen women do, or just headshots and above without anything below. I've got no idea what you look like. I don't know how you carry yourself. I can't tell what your physicality is about. And it's true. I mean, men do the same thing too. So let's be clear. It's not just women, but I look at women's <laughs> pictures, not men's pictures. Since my clients are women, plus I'm also looking for women in my own choice. So I'm sure men do the same thing. I mean, I do the best. I mean, in yeah. my own profile, I make sure the pictures I have, I have at least one picture of like at least waist up, not just neck up. Because that's the thing is most people, I see pictures or, or the profile picture is the same. It's like someone took like selfies four in a row and you put them all up. So it looks like the same picture is slightly different position. <laughs> so... If you're going to be visible and you don't want to be um, typecast as your age, then put pictures in that, that defy that. Yes. Show yourself that way as well as your description because because we, we are visual people as men. So yes. if you put pictures in that show that you don't match the number of your age, you, look, <laughs> you act, you look, you put your beer, your energy is 10 years younger, then show pictures that then people go, she can't be that old, which is yes. a compliment. It's like, why not? Yes. You know, then you own that. Yes, that's what I get all the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> you ride a bicycle. I'm sure you have a picture with you on your bicycle. You walk a lot. I'm sure, you, and you have all your glorious pictures of the things that you see. But you have a would have a picture of yourself out walking somewhere, so that people say, "Oh, his actions match his words." He says he's active. Look at him being active. So if I say right. I play tennis. There needs to be a picture of me in a tennis outfit. If I say I swim or go kayaking, I'm not saying you have to post a bathing suit picture. Show you in a pool. You know, you can mm -hmm. do a pool picture like this, but you're in a pool. If you say you swim, then please show a picture of you in a pool or by right. a pool. Because we it's one of the things, especially in online dating, is it's so easy to lie until you've met them. <laughs> God, it is. Yep, too hopefully. easy to lie. It's yeah. sad how easy it is to lie. So verifying with your pictures is very helpful to back up your words. And again, because a lot of people are visual, I mean, men, especially visual women are too, to a degree, but men especially are visually yeah. excited or attracted or interested. Yeah. Because we don't always, you know, <laughs> put it simply, we don't, we, we look at the picture, we don't read the words, you know, that joke about Playboy begging for the articles, like, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the same thing in dating profiles. We're looking at the pictures and go, oh, she's cute or she's not, or she's, you know, she's showing, she's showing that she's athletic or she's showing, you know, I mean, like pictures of people who do yoga or, you know, they're doing stuff where they're having fun. It's like, that's great. I mean, I've seen profiles of pictures where I look at the woman's pictures and go, she's too healthy for me because <laughs> she's like, she's doing like, you know, the tough mud or one of these, you know, the, one of these Spartan races where she's covered in mud and it's you know, like, it's like, she's like killer. You know, she's so physically strong. I'm like, I, I'm like, I'm out of that league. <laughs> so it works both I've ways. Couple, I've had a couple of women that have done those Iron Man challenges. I'm like, Whoa. yep. I'm, I'm impressed. I, I, take, I take care of myself and I'm healthy, but I'm not that healthy. <laughs> I'll cheer you on, but I'm just, just you know, I'm not going to run with you. <laughs> yeah. And so there's the other piece of when you look at where you are in your life, what your athletic way is or the activities that you do. I mean, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to all be strenuous. Right. Then you have to decide, do you need your partner to be just as much into and able to do exactly the same thing? Some people, that's really important. I have a friend that she, I got the 10 miles a weekend because she has a running group. Her husband runs, but not that much. And she doesn't want him to be part of the group. It's her time with her ladies. Uh, it's her right. time with her girlfriends. And I told you I had a client for a while that is now in a happy relationship. He rode 3,500 miles a year on his bicycle mm -hmm. and he was happy to ride all alone. He didn't even want to be part because I said, well, you could meet people through meet up their bike. I like riding by my own. OK, so we were very specific, even though we put pictures of him on his bicycle. You don't even have to know how to ride a bicycle. Here's some <laughs> things that I would like to be a match, but not this because I yep. would pr I prefer to ride alone. So that's the other thing to be really clear about how much do you need compatibility in the age appropriate activity that you're doing that hopefully somebody within this age range that you want can do 
the same activity that you're asking them to do. And they yeah. don't have to do the things you don't like to do or you don't yeah. want to do with somebody. I mean, it's true for me. I mean, I, mean, I, I do my da daily bike ride and hike every day. That's partly because of my, that's partly because I want to make sure I take care of myself with, you know, don't do the COVID-15 as they joke about, but 15 pounds. I'm like, no, I, I want to maintain some level of balance up all the sourdough. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but also it's, it's for my own sanity. It's my own mental peace of mind. It's like getting out and tuning out the world. So to do those things alone, actually is healthier or better for me in some ways. I mean, yes, going for a bike and ride on the weekend with, with a partner will be great. But the other days of the week, I don't care. Like I got my earbuds in, I can listen to a, you know a podcast or a audiobook, whatever, and get out there and get and get my mind off of the computer and do other things. So for me, it's a health thing for myself. And so somebody else has to require rides as much as me, probably not. But if they do ride, so we can go get on the weekends, like do some fun yeah. stuff. Because I'm actually looking, to be honest, I'm actually looking probably later this year to um, upgrade to a, to an e-bike because I want to I want to do further rides, but with, with less strain on my body. <laughs> And so, but I can be careful because I know that my, knowing that I'm innately lazy ultimately, is I don't want to get one yet because it's too tempting to just ride without you doing any pedaling. <laughs> so yes. for now, I'm sticking to my regular, you know, human powered bike. <laughs> yeah, good, very powered bike. <laughs> exactly, yes. So, so for me, the, the mm. bottom line is very true. It's about having that sense of what is, you know, being exact match may not be necessary. In fact, most people it isn't necessary, but having at least the level of overlap is good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it, as we've discussed, there can be quite extremes of activity level and lack of activity. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to get some water and we're going to go to a break and Cece's going to play her great commercials and we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> See, Bye. You. See you in a minute. Hi, we're, we're back, back. <laughs> talking about what is an okay number of years to have between you and the person that you're dating. And I was thinking about why do you care? Why do you need to have the number be a certain amount? Because what I found is sometimes people think they're going to feel younger if they date somebody younger, or they think they'll feel more, more mature if they date somebody that's older. And I, I mean, those are valid reasons and I don't think they're very helpful reasons. The, this of living vicariously through somebody else isn't a healthy choice. We know that. Mm -hmm. So, and we know that we both talk about being authentic and living the truth, which is why you said about, you know, not, not putting a fake age on your profile or was it women fake their age, men fake that? Their height. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm I very, find that very, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, to be honest, on the apps, I mean, I never thought about changing my, my date of birth to cheat the, the age algorithm. So, but my height is accurate. So, just to be honest about that. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But it's an interesting thing that I find more women do tend to lie about their age and more men tend to lie about their height. It's just an interesting thing that I've, because I read so many profiles and talk to so mm -hmm. many people and find out what the truth is, that <laughs> there's frequently not the truth in those two areas. For divided by the sexes, it's kind of fascinating. It's not it that is, men yeah. don't sometimes lie about their age. It's not as common. No, and, I, and it's funny because I mean, again, because I don't look at men's profiles, I don't look at women's profiles, because that's what I'm interested in. <laughs> <laughs> just to be transparent about that. <laughs> very, very transparent of you, Barry. Yes, yes. So I've noticed quite a few women who's 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 who claim they don't know why the algorithm has the why the profile has the age wrong, but in their description they say my age is really this. I don't know why the app put my age wrong. You don't? <laughs> Pardon me goes, yeah, I'm sure you don't know about that. <laughs> yes, yeah, I've certainly seen those when I've looked at profiles for the my male clients. And yeah. I've discovered that it's not so hard to change. If you did sort of somehow make an oops, okay, we do oopses, we push the wrong button, but you can let the internet dating site know and they will be happy to fix it or tell you how to fix it. Right. And so there's even just like the little fudge of, well, I got you to look at my profile. Well, now you're going to see that I really am younger than my age because that's the, I get the reason behind lying. I do. Mm -hmm. I don't see any reason to lie, even though I don't look my age. And I'm really clear in my profile about why I don't act my age, or at least what some people perceive as somebody who's 70. So I think it's really important that you are very clear about who you are and what you do and what you like and what you want your partner to do with you as well and what the things are you'd like to do with your partner. Like I tell people, I think golf courses are really beautiful. I like being there. I'm just not very good at playing. So put me in charge of the cart and snacks. <laughs> I'm really, I talk about golf because I, I can play, but I don't hit, I hit very straight, but I don't hit very far. And everybody gets impatient playing with me because it takes forever. I mean, forever. I hit the ball so many, it keeps going in the right direction. It just never goes very far. So stick, so, to miniature, so stick to miniature golf then. Yeah. Oh, I'm much better at <laughs> Or give me the cart. And I'll bring, I promise I'll be really great snacks. And I'll, you can be the, I'll be the designated driver. You can even have, you know, an alcoholic beverage. How fun is that? And I go. love being there. I love the atmosphere. I love the, the, the personalities of the people when they're playing. So if you don't require me to pick up a club and play with you, I'm happy to play with you by driving the cart. There but it's go. been interesting the responses I get from men who go, you really don't want to play? And I go, well, you don't want me to play. I'm fine. <laughs> you don't want me to play. Well, I'll teach you. Okay. We'll go yeah. to the driving range and you can figure out how I can hit farther. But here's just a funny example about how women will say they like golf, but they don't play. But I'm really honest about my limitations. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the thing is, is and, and it gets back to the age thing again and, and the height thing. This piece about falsifying your information or pretending to be something you're not is when does that end? My big thing, you know, in my work is like around integrity and, and being honest in your relationships. And if you're lying about something as overt or as simple as that, how do I know that you're going to be truthful everywhere else in our relationship? Oh. So my so my trust in so my trust in you would be less easily given because I have not seen that you've shown the truth from the beginning. And so while you're saying about golf and being clearly clear about that, that's totally honest. And so there's no assumption on their part. Right. And because age for everybody is a thing, it's a thing. Mm -hmm. So why not be honest about it? Because lying is also just as big of a thing as you've just so eloquently pointed out. So, don't start out with a lie by lying about your age, right. even though there's all those reasons that you can justify doing it. So also to be open to looking at other people when no matter what age they've said. So when I've had people go out to meetups and they're like, oh, there's only old people. Did you talk to them? Did you talk to them? <laughs> Did you find out what their interests are? No, they all just look old. Well, but do they act old? Because some people do. They just look older. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah. They looked their age or they looked, but oh my gosh, they're still really active. They have an active mind, they have an active body and they're not older than the age you want. They just look older. So there we are back to the opposite of, do I want to be on that person's arm? You knew where I was going with that. <laughs> I can see it. I can feel it coming. I, I don't want to hang around with this old looking person. But if anything, it'll make you look even younger. So there you go. <laughs> leverage. It's all about leverage. <laughs> it, it's, I mean, I just accept how funny us human beings are about stuff. And age seems to just carry so many radiating challenges for people. There's there's not just one thing that is tied under age. It's a big umbrella, which is why I thought this was such a great subject for us to talk about today, because people have stuff about it, about their own age, about other people's ages. And I think, I mean, I, I would say there's probably a certain, I won't say bias, but there's, an, there's a presumption that this is very true in the way in the United States. I think it's different in Europe to a degree, although I haven't surveyed all the countries. But I know it's something America is very much about that sort of modern, that up to date, that looking, you know, fit. And I mean, it's funny because, you know, to, back to the thing we said earlier about, you know, different experiences, different history. You know, <laughs> I mean, I do remember, you know, the, the long cord on the phone in the kitchen that you listen to on, you know, on party line stuff when I was a kid because that, I'm old enough to remember that. Yeah, so there's, a, there's a joke about that one, or you, or you have a picture of a cassette and a pencil, and you got to figure out what that means. And if you don't know, the you know, it's like different age groups. But the thing is, on the, on the other end of the coin, there are people I know in their fifties who don't even know how to use a smartphone. They're still using flip phones. So watching how the age doesn't correspond, you know, I'm 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 always on the latest technology because I love blah, 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 playing it with it. So I've been on computers, you know, started playing computers in my in my teens. Even though they were not very high computers at that back then, you know, back in the day, they weren't caveman stuff, but it still wasn't, you know, the high technology. So, also part of this conversation is the recognition about where your mental faculties are at along the way too. It's not just about physical stuff, because yeah, that's important for the joy of the sex and connection and everything else you do physically, but it's the mental compatibility there too, and having yeah. things which are outside somebody's mindset, and you know, knowing people and having met quite a few women and men who don't have any faculties on this area, which I'm not very savvy about, part of me feels disappointed, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And so to be with somebody who doesn't have any understanding of that, mm -hmm. and it would be more work than benefit to teach them, which is the other part, is something where I would be interested in doing either. Mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's something where the person's pretty savvy, but they, want, they don't know certain things, and I could give them gifts on that level, that's okay. But when they're so far out of this, the, it's like the, we don't have any, our Gantt charts don't overlap. There's no overlap in our bubbles. Then it's like, is there any incompatibility? Yes, yes. If there's not even a tiny place to put a hook into, you right. need something. You need, there's all these other things about them. So gosh, you'd really like to teach them or they know nothing, but they really want to learn because they've always wanted to learn or they want to learn because it's important to you. I mean, all that is, my sister-in-law knew nothing. Baseball could not have been less interesting to her <laughs> the entire time she was growing up my yep. brother has listened to been gone to baseball his whole life she knows all the players they have season tickets and she loves it now and she started doing it because my brother it was a big deal to him and he really mm -hmm. wanted her to come along and she's like okay well now she's as big a fan as him there you go so there you go i mean they their ages are very close but you can still have this analogy even if your ages are apart that right. you say, this is really important to me. Do you think this could become important to you? And have a serious conversation in the early days of dating. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and and one of the things I want to speak to, because what, what just came up at the back of this, is that we're, we're, we're um, let me say this, we're still confined through dating apps to a limited uh, amount of, um, of criteria. Basically, we're not, I mean, it's basically demographic, not psychographic, for example. The information in your in your bio for your compatibility with dating app is basically on such simple criteria that doesn't describe who you are. Yeah. You know, when, when even even to the fact of putting like spiritual versus Christian or whatever that is, is only a, is is a tiny little hint about who the person is, is about. So that's why, as you said, it's like it's important to write things out because what is said in that little you know four line you know descriptor. It describes half the planet, so it doesn't help anybody to get more specific. So you've got to really be clear about writing out what you mean in your dating profile and anywhere else you communicate. 
what what moves you, what inspires you, what what's your, what's your passion? Because mm -hmm. that's where the compatibility comes from. Yes. Oh, Barry, such a good point. Yeah, the way I put it is, you need to tell a story. There you go. So if you say you like walking on the beach, why? Do you use one of those metal detectors? Do you do it for exercise? Do you do it because it connects you to Mother Earth? I mean, there's so you collect things for recycling. I mean, say right. why? Because there's hardly anybody I know that doesn't like walking on the beach, but I don't know that I'd want to walk on the beach with somebody that wants to keep looking for things with an electric thing. I like to keep going. I mean, I really, right. I want to get from here to there and enjoy it while I'm going, but I'm not really a stop and poke along kind of person. But I've had clients, one of them who's a, she's an artist, so she likes stopping and taking pictures. So she's very clear in her profile about, I like stopping and taking pictures. Yeah. And she's a very accomplished hiker, walker. She's done lots of climbing things, but she does, and she's got a lar larinette thing with her camera on it. So she's mm -hmm. not going to drop it down some cliff. So she's very prepared to hang off this thing and take a picture. <laughs> and the guy needs to be okay with that. Not somebody that just wants to power through, which is, there's nothing wrong with it, but it isn't a match for her. So, so yes, I was to say, the thing is then it's like putting in your profile, you like long walks on the beach may not be the thing you want to put up there because it doesn't mean enough. <laughs> it doesn't mean enough at all. And so when people are looking at ages, this is why the meat of your profile is so important. Right. If you're willing and open to dating somebody outside of like a couple of years of where you are, then you need to say, this is who I am and what I'm looking for so that the person that's outside that normal radius goes, well, that's so me. And wow, that's what I'm looking for too. Or, oh, that, like you said, that is so not me. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be honest. <laughs> and I tell you how much that's not me. Well, I told you I'd gone out with that guy that wants to go for weeks in his motorhome and for months on cruise. And I said, oh, it's so not me. <laughs> so if we could stop using age as such a stop, it's such a, a boundary, yeah. such a closed door, and spread out these other criteria and, and make age much more minor, mm -hmm. I think people would find dating easier because if you're so narrow in the age, you're missing out on people who might have much more of the activity and the interest level that you have than the people that are just in your chronological age area. At least that's been my experience. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, for me, I, I mean, I've said, and just to be again, in the, in the, in the interest of transparency on my dating profile in terms of my search criteria, I've been noticing that I've been putting the, the lower limit of how young they can be has been creeping up lately. Really? Because, because, it, because I'm discovering that when, the, when it was too, too low, and, and I'm talking about like, you know, when, when they're in their early 40s, that's too young for me now. It used, used to be 30s was fine. That's like, I'm watching, it's like, the compatibility is not there anymore. Because the women I was interested in the thirties are now in the forties anyway, but it's like recognizing that that criteria shifted. So it, it's still, I'm still watching that. And then part of me is funny, and and this is a totally different direction. But I I was on a, a clubhouse room last week, and this guy comes in and he was so proud of himself for his thing is done. He, and he said in part of his his blurb as he was talking was like he's so proud and so happy that at the age of sixty two he's he's a first time father. And I'm like, first of all, it's not hard for us to be a father at any age because we have sperm. It's the woman who's at 62 as a kid. That's that's impressive. But the second thing is, is that if you're 62 and your your baby is 18 months or a year old, that means when they're 20, you'll be in your 80s. Yeah. And that's where I'm. That's where I draw the line. It's like you know, that's why I wouldn't want to be a be a first time father at any time over 50 because because then it's not good for the child to have a father who's basically their grandfather's age equivalent sort of thing. So, so thoughtful of you. Well, it's, it's, to me, just it doesn't feel fair. Yeah. You People know. are a little more selfish about that than you are being, that they want to have a kid. It's not, let me think about the child too. Right. And, and of course, there is the other part of the, on the other side of the coin, to be being lazy, is to go with somebody who's got kids who are over a certain age, so they don't want to have to deal with it. <laughs> now, I'm not saying it's the way I'm putting it, but the recognition is that you know, most of the women I'm going to go out with, the kids are going to be more than four or five years old, generally speaking. Because they, because if they're in their feet, mid forties, they probably have already had the kids a bit younger than that. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the mental gymnastics to figure it out. <laughs> yes, I lived with a teenager with my late husband, and that's a hard no now. 
I'm not doing that again. It worked right. out okay in the end, but oh, I don't want to. I would, I would do everything in my power to not do that again. And I think grandkids would be so fun that visit. Well, see, that's the thing. The funny thing is now is it is it is a few years back. I mean, it's going quite a few years ago. Realizing is that if there was a woman who had adult children, I wasn't interested. And now it's kind of like that's okay. <laughs> it's like it's like the reality. I'm saying is that is that we mature, yeah. we shift, and we have a different perspective. So yeah. the whole thing about how many years is okay doesn't always. It, it sometimes it expands, sometimes it contracts, sometimes it moves with you. So if you've got an age range of like ten years younger, as you get older, your bottom age goes up with you. Yes, hopefully. Oh, well, hopefully, hopefully, yes. <laughs> that's, that's what I want to speak to is the recognition is that just to be aware of what your preferences are because whoever, you know, who is watching this, just notice what it is you're choosing because for one thing, has your age range, or I should say as your, the age of the person you want to be with stayed the same for the last 10 years? Or has it moved with you? Because if it hasn't moved, maybe you want to look at that again. Yeah. Just to say. I'm, I so knew where you were going with that and i 100 percent agree <laughs> that i've watched people even though they've chronologically got older they don't move that lower range and i'm no. like really really and what i found too for the men that come coaching with me and we have this very serious discussion how's that been working which is probably why you're hiring me because it's not working if you're trying to date somebody that's 20, 25, 30 years younger, they're in such a different phase of their life. They're in yeah. such a different place. Their, their desires, their lifestyle is so different. I don't care how active you are. Aren't you looking at retirement? Don't you want to spend a lot of time together? These are probably people that are meshed in their jobs. They're so committed to working probably a lot, you know, 18 hours a week or 18 hours a day. So that's really could be a, a potential problem. So to be thinking about what is their life like? Is this really fit your life? And what is your life like? Does it really fit them? And even if the sex is great and why well, you can spend tons of money and oh, it's so much fun having them on your arm. And I, yes, it is more men than women. There's women that date very lots younger. And I'm not saying don't, I just say be conscious about it. Think of the reasons that you're doing it. Think of the right. practical, besides all the juicy reasons, let's look at the practical reasons. And is yeah. this really gonna work for both of you? Cause I, I've talked to guys that are like, yeah, I wanna go travel and you know, I wanna be able to be gone, which is why they don't get a pet. And I'm like, well, now you have somebody that they work all the time and they're not even, I mean, they're. 20 years away or 30 years away from retirement mm -hmm. how can your lives mesh aren't you one of both of you going to get frustrated well that brings up a whole lot of conversation about compatibility and preferences beyond the age point because you know because one of the things i'm aware of is that the work i'm doing i don't plan on ending anytime soon i'm not choosing to, you know i mean i don't have a job to retire from because it's my vocation versus a career so being with somebody who has also a entrepreneurial style or approach that they live their life that way is much more, much easier than if they're in a nine to five job because I've done that but see that that's the that's another piece which is like all these different criteria beyond this so just because I'm, I'm like we could go there but that's another show <laughs> certainly because I'm thinking the same thing I I don't ever I can't imagine stopping coaching and I've coached from other countries with, as right. well as other states I mean nobody even knows where I am when I'm coaching, it's so effortless for me. Ha having Wi Fi will travel. <laughs> yeah, I am. And I'm in control of my calendar and how much I open it up. You know, if I'm going to be yeah. flying, I, I mark out the whole day and everybody just works around it. So I need somebody that has their same kind of life that they can do it from afar or they're not doing anything, you know, as far as work, they're doing volunteer things or taking classes right. so that we're not. I'm not a join at the hip kind of person. I know couples that are, and they want to spend every moment together. And I think that's lovely. And it's not me. I want to have <laughs> stuff that we both come back and talk yeah. about that we spent our days doing, not the whole day, but some things that we then go, wow, let me tell you what I did today and tell me what you did today, which I love. I love that for me. Yeah. And that's the and, thing about the, this age piece is really about the age. It's not just the age thing, but it's like, what does that mean for their lifestyle? So that's like, again, that's the thing you want to be aware of. So numbers yeah. mean more than that. Boy, haven't we covered that because people are so <laughs> caught up on the number. And right. I love how people will say, oh, age is just a number. 
but they don't really believe that because they haven't thought of all the stuff that you and I have now talked about. And there's more. <laughs> there's so much more. I think we dissected it a lot though, because Zizi's now yeah. telling us we need to stop. But I yeah. really hope, I really, my, my intention and yours as well always is to give you enough information to go, wow, I never thought about it like that. Hmm, that's a really good point. You know, maybe I need to know more. And the way that you find out more is to talk to either one of us directly. <laughs> Nicely like, done. Nicely done. Cool? Nicely done. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I was thinking about it in the shower. I do all my important thinking in the shower. It's a good place so, to be. <laughs> yeah. These are so little distractions, at least at the moment. So, to get... <laughs> my mind went straight there. <laughs> I love that I always make you laugh. It's my job. It's part of my job. It's on my Which I, I appreciate. I appreciate. <laughs> make very laugh and blush a little. So to get a hold of me is you could go to my website, which is www.theperfectcatch.com and you can sign up for my newsletter and you can also click on what's holding you back from love and we can have a personal complimentary conversation to dig in and just find out it might have to do with age or it might have to do with so many other things that you're just not even aware of because you can't fix something if you don't know about it. And you can also send me a direct email to christine at theperfectcatch.com. And you can reach me on social media on Facebook and LinkedIn and Pinterest <laughs> and Twitter and YouTube. Yes. And Instagram. And Instagram. I'm so glad you're always there to remember. <laughs> My pleasure. And Barry, please tell everyone how they can get a hold of you and listen to you laugh in real time with them. In real time. Yes, indeed. Uh, I'll laugh with you, not at you, for certain. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my website is the best place. To well, the best place to reach me is you go to my website, which is barryselby.com. Um, there's a little button on the navigation bar that says "Let's chat." If you want to have a conversation with me, and we can talk, and we can see where you want to go, and if we're on the same page, and if you want to work together, um, I also have my, my 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 signature programs on there. I have a video series called "Let's um, Cracking the Codependency Code," which is a great series to watch. Just on my website, you can just all embedded. You can watch it there. My books on there, a bunch of other stuff. Uh, you drop me an email if you want to reach out to me directly at barry at barryselby.com. And on social media, I am all over the place. And most of it is still Barry Selby. So YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter is Barry Selby. Pinterest is Barry Selby. Facebook is barryselby.author. Instagram is the real Barry Selby. And on Clubhouse, it's Barry Selby. So you can find me different places. If worst comes to worst, just to go to the website and jump on my email list because I am I do share these and a bunch of other things on my weekly newsletter as well. Yes. You're very profound. Proficient, prolific, prolific. I knew, I knew that wasn't. <laughs> well, you're, you're proficient in your prolificity, right? That's something like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we are here every Thursday at one o'clock Pacific and four o'clock Eastern, and all the times in between. And we always talk about dating and all the challenges and the rewards and the excitement and the fun and i hope that you'll come and join us and watch our replays and share them with all of your family and friends and hopefully we'll give you some opportunities and ideas to play that will give you some new ways to look at things so you actually have fun with what you're doing oh it's the whole point is this is supposed to be the fun part is absolutely the part. absolutely yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so thanks very it's always great to see you Thank you, Christine, for making me laugh and chuckle and blush a bit. And thanks for the great time we had. It's a fun conversation. <laughs> Good for your, for your um, complexion and your circulation. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we'll see you so, next week. <laughs>